this is a lost art, and I, I think it's really important. I was watching um, Miguel Tejada last night hit. It was, it was a, it was, he was up in the ninth inning, and how he just spoiled pitches, had such great bat control. You don't see kids have any good bat control anymore because they don't play pepper. We used to play pepper a lot as kids, and it's great for hand-eye coordination. And so you get, the kids like to drill, you get them in playing in pepper, just going to lob the ball, you choke up way up on the bat, and you try to hit it down the line on the, oh, stay there, you try to go right around the circle if you can. All right, now again, the kids aren't going to be able to do this at first, but it's such a great drill for bat control. And you can, granted, you can work in fielding in this drill too, all right? And if they pop the ball up or if they catch the ball, I'm out, and then they switch around and go. So let's say if I pop the ball up here, I can't even do it. I don't hit fly balls. Whatever. Um, my mechanics are too good. If I, if I drop my hands and pop it up and someone catches it, then I'm out. Whoever catches it gets to hit. And try to have them work on going around if they get real good at it. It's great for hand-eye coordination. It's a lost art. The kids don't play it. We played it a lot as kids. We used to play running bases a lot as kids. I don't remember that game. That's a great base running drill, too. And it just Again, I'm, I'm digressing here a little bit, but we had to work on rundowns the other day. When, we, when you guys were kids, I know when I was we never had to work on rundowns because we all played running bases. We knew how to do a rundown naturally. These kids don't know how. But, you know, the kids don't have any bat control. They don't make enough contact because they don't play pepper. Have them play pepper. One thing about pepper, it really promotes bat control. Hit the ball to right, hit the ball to center, hit the ball to left. Another lost art. So, guys, so many guys just can hit it to only one field. So it teaches an inside out swing, barrel ahead of the hands, line drive swing. It teaches a choked up swing. That's what it does. It's terrific. Another lost art is bunting. You know, it, again, we talked about this before, but when you guys are bunting, make sure they don't square around like this. It's not a good habit. If you step on the plate, you're out, first of all. Second of all, you can't protect yourself if the ball's coming at your head. All right? You want to make sure that you just work on, sometimes the kids just don't even know how to square. You can just, for five minutes, have them work on that and not even do anything else. Square, OK? Square. Bad head's at the top of my strike zone. The reason why you want the bat at the top of your strike zone it's my mental image. If the ball's above my bat, I pull it back, it's a ball. If the ball's below my bat, could be a strike. I'm not going to drop my bat. I'm going to drop my knees. Keep the bat head up. Okay? Now, I mean, you should be able to get to a point, and again, the kids aren't going to be strong enough to do it, but just have the kids work on bunting, throw it, get some velocity on it. They can have them work the lines. Okay? First base, just use the rudder system, pull it back. Third base, okay? And then if you get your kids, you know, some of your really advanced kids, they should be able just to do, go ahead. They should be able to bunt with one hand. You know, I mean, but I mean, that takes some time. But that's the idea. You want to get them to be able to do that. I mean, that's, again, down the line, but that's what you want to be able to teach them, that type of bat control. Okay? It's also going to strengthen their wrists and their forearms, too.